I'm Kiva, and I'm right now in Ross's Point, and I'm going to be showing you around the area. As you can see, there's Oyster and Pony Island right behind us, and there's the Metro, Ma Metro Man right there. I'm going to be showing you about the plants and animals in the rocky seashore, and I even brought my friend Martina. Hi everybody, my name is Martina and I work with the Heritage and Schools team. Always remember, if you're visiting the Rocky Seashore, to make sure you have an adult with you. Also, only visit when the tide is going out. And be careful when you're looking through the rock pools. It's a little bit uneven, so watch your step, mind where you're going, take your time, walk, don't run. Yes, Martina, I agree. And remember, just leave it how you found it. We do not want to harm the animals either, because they're living creatures too, just like us. So look Martina, I can see some green seaweed, and some brown, and even a bit of red too. Yeah, well done Quiva, because that's exactly how seaweeds are divided out, whether they're brown, green or red seaweeds. They really are quite amazing plants when you look at them more closely. Well, if they're plants, then we need food, but how can they have, how can they get some food? Well, that's a really good question, because just like plants on the land, they actually have to make their own food using very two simple ingredients. One of those is water, and there's plenty of that around here. The other is air, or it's carbon dioxide in the air, and there's plenty of that here as well. And then to mix those two ingredients, that takes energy, and these plants can't pay the electricity bill, so they have to get their energy for free. But they get their energy for free from, guess where? The sun, I'd say. Well done. And if they use the energy from the sun to mix together the carbon dioxide and the water to make their own food, which they then store in their plant parts for themselves to survive on, and then other creatures can actually nibble on those plants for their food as well. So here's a very interesting seaweed plant. It's very common and it's called bladderwrack. And uh, the reason why it's called bladderwrack is because it has these little bubbly things called bladders all over them. Can you see them? Oh yeah, but why do they, why are they on it? Yeah, that's a really good question too. Well, they're on it because as we said earlier, all these plants need to get energy from the sun. So they need to be able to float, to be on the surface to get that sun's energy. So this plant uses these little air bubbles which help it to float. They're like little armbands for plants so that it can be at the surface of the water to get its energy to make its own food. Cool, can I pop one? Yeah, do. <laughs> oh wow. That's the air coming out. Oh, and look, Martina, what I found here. It's like a mini rock pool. It is. It's a lovely rock pool and lots of different things in it. Very interesting. I think, it, is that, isn't this a mussel? Oh, well done, Quiva. It is. It is a mussel and you can see that it has got two shells uh, to make up its body to keep it safe on the inside. And usually it will be attacked, attached to the rocks um, so that the sea won't pull it away and grab it into the deep ocean where it couldn't survive. It prefers to be somewhere like this in its rock pool. So we'll put it back to where we found it there. That is, that's a mussel. Oh, and what are these? Mmm, those creatures there. Now those fellows are called, these are dog whelps. Um, and what they do is they don't eat plants like most other snails of the sea like this do. What they do is they actually eat other creatures because they have a little kind of teeth things here inside that they use to wear down a hole through the center of the shells of other creatures and then they have special chemicals that helps to make it easier to drill a hole through and they go and digest the insides of other creatures and um, that's how they eat and they move off to their next victim so if you see a little sea snail shell with a hole in it and um, it might be one that was um, eaten alive by a dog whelk, so we put him back to where he was. Wow. Yeah, amazing. Oh, and what are these? 
a series of shells, but I can't seem to take them off. Ah, and you won't either. They're really strongly stuck to the rock. They're called limpets. And when the tide is in and they're covered with water, they will creep along on the rocks, eating little bits of food, little bits of seaweed, of algae as they go. But once the tide goes out and there's no water, they will come back to the same place on the rock again and clamp themselves down on the rock, sealing themselves there so they don't lose any water. Because if they dry out, they will die. Wow. Yes. That's really interesting. Mm. And I think I can see, aren't these periwinkles? Oh, well done, Quiva. They are. They're lovely little periwinkles. And they're little dark. Let's pick one up for a minute. They're little dark shelled creatures. They've got one shell and a very pointy top. And they also like to eat seaweeds as well. So, and you can see their colour, they're kind of camouflaged, particularly against the brown seaweeds. So we put him back too. Whoa. Oh wait, look what I found here. It's something red on the rock. Oh, that little red blob, you often see them on the rocks. Now this one here, it's called a sea anemone, little beadlet anemone. And when uh, the tide is out, it kind of closes in on itself and just looks like a blob of red jelly on the rocks. But when it's covered in water, it opens up and you can just see its, it's little tentacles, like little arms are reaching out to grab its food. Well spotted, Quiva. Whoa. Oh, look at this, Martina. I can see crabs. Oh, yes, well got there, Quiva. They're actually called shore crabs. Wow, I can see the ten legs and two of them are claws. That's right. I think, though, it's best if we put them back in their uh, home. I think you're right, too. Okay. Now, that's great, because we want to leave this place just like we found it, so we leave no trace. Mm -hmm.